So when I use the chainsaw mill with the big five foot bar, I find that the motor oiler itself can't supply enough oil. And I'm getting a fair bit of wear up at the nose of the bar here. So to combat this I'm going to make a secondary oiler that attaches to this post and we'll just drip feed onto the chain down here. So these are the pieces that I'm going to use to build the secondary oiler. This is a piece of uh, DN50 PVC, 20 centimeters long, two end caps. You could really make that any size sort of PVC you wanted, just as long as your hose clamps uh, fit fit that size PVC. Uh, it's going to attach to the mill in the same sort of way that the mill's built, and that's based on the premise that this piece of 35 mil slips over the top of this piece of 30 mil square. So and to lock it, I'm just going to use a bolt, a 10 mil bolt and nut. I'm also going to use a piece of 40, uh, 140 millimeter uh, flat bar. That's probably about four millimeters, but it doesn't have to be that thick. Just whatever. Uh, the hose clamps to attach the actual chamber to to that. A couple of four mil um, irrigation taps and just a, a four mil sort of threaded end and some if you can get it four mil clear vinyl tubing but I could only find three but I'll make three fit four no problems So now I'll just glue that end to the piece of PVC. So I'm just going to bend this little bit of flat bar just to get a bit of offset away from the attachment point. So for allow for the oil to flow and not create a vacuum I had to put a hole in the in the lid but when I transport the chainsaw mill I don't want this oil leaking out everywhere so I'm going to put a tap in the lid as well 
glue that in so I can turn it on and off when I'm using it. So there's one of the brackets finished. So I'll just attach it to here using these hose clamps. So you might be wondering why I'd use two taps. I was thinking about this and I thought I'd make one the lower tap, the adjustment tap, and just set it and then never have to touch it again. And when I wanted to turn it on and off, I'd have a, a tap above and it'd be on an on and off tap. If you only had one tap, you'd have to set it each time you turned it off, which would be a bit of a pain in the ass. So now I'll cut the pipe and install the two taps. So there it is. I also put a just one of the outlets on the end and you'll see why. I'm just going to use a zip tie to um, hold this down. So I'm just going to fill up this oiler with uh, sump oil, clean sump oil. So we have some oil down of the first tap and nothing any further. I'll turn that one on and I'll just crack this one and hopefully that will just drip out the end. So I just give the oiler a bit of a test rub and as you just saw it's getting a bit gunged up but it's on the on this side of the um, jig so I'm just going to move it around to this side and see how, if it does any better. Spot on. So I just gave the oiler a bit of a test one run and it worked really well. The only modification I made was I cut that bracket here a little bit shorter just so the cap had a little bit more room. It was touching. Uh, the two taps worked well and the position of the outlet there worked quite well too. So Overall it worked really well. I'm going to use it from now on. Hopefully this video might be useful for you to build an oiler of your own.